My name is Dr Nicholas Allen and I'm a senior lecturer in politics at Royal Holloway University of London. As a student of politics and as a professional political scientist, standing here in Runnymede helps bring to home one of the puzzling features of Britain's political system. Britain, or perhaps more accurately England, was of course home to a landmark event in the history of constitutionalism, that body of thought which holds that governments, that's the state, that rulers should uh, be, should, their authority should rest on a fundamental body of law and that that same body of law should of course act as a check and limit on their power. But whilst Magna Carta, which was signed as long ago as the 13th century, um, really was a major landmark event in this school of thought, Britain of course, unlike virtually every other liberal democracy in the world, hasn't gone that one step further and signed up to a codified constitution. A codified constitution is essentially a single document that enshrines in one place all the most important rules and responsibilities and rights and powers of the various governing institutions of the state and the relationship between these governing institutions and indeed their relationship with ordinary citizens. Most codified constitutions also set out the fundamental rights and liberties of citizens as well. Perhaps the most famous example of a codified constitution is, of course, the United States of America's constitution, which was drawn up in 1787 and which to this day still sets out how the United States political system should operate. Most political systems, most liberal democracies have codified constitutions. It's much easier to identify those liberal democracies that do not have codified constitutions. In the world today, there are just three liberal democracies that lack what political scientists would recognize as a single codified constitution. These democracies are Israel, New Zealand, and of course, the United Kingdom. So why doesn't the United Kingdom have a codified constitution? Well, if you we wish to understand why Britain hasn't followed the path that was taken by so many other countries, it helps to look at the paths that were followed by those countries. There are various events that normally precede the drawing up of a codified constitution. One of these is revolution or separation from a pre-former controlling power. The United States best exemplifies this path to a codified constitution following the American Declaration of Independence and the failure of the Articles of Confederation, American elites decided that they needed a new set of rules, a new set of fundamental guidelines for how they would conduct business. As a result, in 1787, they got together and drew up the American Constitution. A second way, a second type of event that often precedes the drawing up of a constitution is an invasion by a foreign power and the collapse of the previous political system, the previous regime. This pattern of events were best exemplified by um, the invasion and the defeat of Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan in the Second World War. Following their defeat, the um, invading powers, the occupying powers, required the two countries to draw up new constitutions. Constitutions in Germany and Japan that of course last to this day. And the third general reason why constitutions, codified constitutions, emerge is largely is because of internal failings in a regime, whether economic or political, that lead to the collapse of a political system and a general agreement by elites, or at least by a powerful group of elites, that it is time to draw up a new constitution. Such a pattern of events occurred in France in the 1950s and led to the creation of the Fifth Republic, a constitution which still lasts to this day. Needless to say, Britain over the years has been the scene of regime failure, it has been the scene of foreign invasion, it has even been the scene of revolution. But none of these events triggered a lasting constitutional settlement that rested on a single codified document. So what does Britain have if it doesn't have a codified constitution? Obviously it doesn't have 
a single document that serves as a higher body of law in which are set out all those important rules and principles that describe and explain how Britain should be governed. But it does have a constitution in the sense that there are a set of most important rules and ideas that exist in the mind of political elites and which they use and draw on to govern their relations with one another and with the people. Britain lacks a codified constitution. But to say that it has no constitution at all would be quite misleading. Because constitutions, in addition to being documents, also refer to simply the most important rules and principles that structure how political systems operate. And in that sense, of course, Britain does indeed have a constitution. It does have a set of rules, a set of ideas, a set of principles that political elites, that politicians understand and follow as they go about their business. Some of these most important rules are set down in Acts of Parliament. They are written down, if you like, not in a single document, but nonetheless on parchment. Some of, the doc some of the most important rules simply exist in the ideas, in the minds of politicians. Perhaps the most important idea that animates the British political system is the notion of the sovereignty of Parliament. In some political systems, sovereignty is rest vested in the constitution itself, in the codified constitution. But in Britain, it's conventional for sovereignty, for ultimate authority, to be vested in the people that sit at Westminster, in the Palace of Westminster, in the House of Commons, the House of Lords, and indeed also Her Majesty the Queen. Collectively, these people are the location of ultimate authority in the British political system. And because they are sovereign, because Parliament is sovereign, what it says goes. There is no other body, no other institution that can tell Parliament that what it is doing is wrong. Similarly, no parliament can bind a successor parliament because the parliament sitting at any one time is sovereign. And by the same token, no parliament that currently sits is bound by the rules, the laws, the motions of any of its predecessor parliaments. It is ultimately sovereign. So Britain does have a constitution, but in many ways it is a constitution that exists in the minds of politicians, in the minds of political actors themselves. Crucially, there is a large degree of consensus about the way the political system should work. So, should Britain have a codified constitution? Well, the 800th anniversary of Magna Carta, in addition to highlighting the strangeness of Britain's political system, at least compared to other liberal democracies, in that it doesn't have a codified constitution, has also helped to rekindle a debate in British politics as to whether it is indeed time for Britain to catch up with virtually every other liberal democracy and adopt a codified constitution. Now there are various reasons why Britain should adopt a codified constitution, or at least arguments that are put forward by proponents of such a change. One of these I've already alluded to, which is the notion that Britain's constitution, insofar as it exists in the minds of political elites, is somewhat malleable. It is open to interpretation. On the one hand, being open to interpretation means that a political system is able to adapt, to evolve over time. But it also means that politicians can potentially exceed their authority, can act in excess of the rights and or powers that they are supposed to enjoy. By committing a constitution to paper, by establishing a higher fundamental set of rules, so politicians will be more constrained in their exercise of power, so power will be limited and checked. A related reason is, of course, to tidy up some of the oddities of Britain's political system. Many of the ideas about the way the political system should function, the ideas that are sometimes set out in paper, other times exist only in custom, are often contradictory. They don't always pull in the same direction. By bringing everything together, there will be an opportunity to ensure that there is consistency across the board, that there is a single logic that determines the way British democracy will function. A third reason why people say it's time to adopt a codified constitution is to rest and make a clear signal that authority, ultimate authority in the political system ultimately rests on the shoulders of the people. 
At the moment, we are governed by this notion of parliamentary sovereignty, the idea that parliament is sovereign. Many people say that this is outmoded, that in a democracy, it's the people that should be sovereign and should be formally recognised as being sovereign. Drawing up a constitution would create an opportunity to say right at the beginning of such a document that the people are sovereign and that ultimate authority derives from them. Another reason to introduce a codified constitution is to really help educate citizens and others about where power lies in the political system. If you're German or French or American or indeed a citizen in every other, virtually every other liberal democracy, if you want to know how your political system operates, you look at the constitution. By creating such a document in Britain, so citizens of Britain would finally be able to see what their country is about. And finally, there is the question of how on earth such a document could have popular endorsement. If a constitution, if a codified constitution were to highlight the importance of popular sovereignty as opposed to parliamentary sovereignty, how on earth would the people be able to say, yes, this represents us? So, even if you agree that it is about time that Britain had a codified constitution, you're still left with three rather difficult questions that need answering. Perhaps the most important of these is, what on earth should go in such a codified constitution? What should it look like? What should it contain? What are the most important rules and principles governing a political system? How would we decide what should go in a constitution? Is it time perhaps even to change some of these rules to democratise Britain's political system further? A second problem confronting any would-be introducers of a codified constitution is the question of the process itself by which such a document is drawn up. Should it be left to politicians? We live in an era of anti-politics. Many people are distrustful of their rulers and elites. Should we, indeed, would citizens be entirely happy allowing their, their rulers, their governors, politicians to draw up a codified constitution? And finally, the question remains of how such a document should get popular endorsement. If a codified constitution is to represent the body politic, if it is to stand for something greater, if it is to stand. Finally, um, finally, proponents of a written constitution need to address the question of how such a document will garner popular support. And finally, there is the question of how on earth such a document could have popular endorsement. If a constitution if a codified constitution were to highlight the importance of popular sovereignty as opposed to parliamentary sovereignty, how on earth would the people be able to say, yes, this represents us?